Do you have anything to say to the public? It's a great day for Miss Salmon. She just needs some time to be with her family right now. What would you like to tell your son? She would tell her son. She's always told her son. She loves him more than anything. For the first time, we are seeing Noor Salman, the widow of the Pulse nightclub shooter, a free woman tonight. After being acquitted earlier today on charges, she helped her husband, Omar Mateen, plan one of the deadliest mass shootings in U.S. history. Good evening. I'm Sandra Smith in for Martha McCallum. Prosecutors say Salman knew about Mateen's guns, his affinity for violent Muslim extremist videos, and his intention to attack a location but did nothing to stop him. June 12, 2016, he opened fire at the Orlando nightclub, killing 49 people, injuring 58 others. Mateen was killed in a gun battle with police. Tonight, the victims and their families are overcome with anger, outrage, and heartbreak. As we've learned, Salman cried with joy after the verdict was announced. A spokeswoman for her family says Noor is the real victim here. The family is elated. Noor can go home now to her son, Zach, resume her life and try to pick up the pieces from two years in jail. The family really wants to very first say that we're very sorry for the family members and friends of the 49 victims of the Pulse nightclub shooting and also the, vic the survivors of that horrible attack. Tiara Parker was held hostage inside the bathroom at Pulse nightclub for hours with the gunman as he murdered dozens of innocent people, including Parker's 18-year-old cousin. Parker herself was shot twice. Tiara joins me now for exclusive reaction. Tiara, good evening to you. Thank you for coming on the show. Yes, hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm sure this has been a difficult day for you and your family. Um, I would have to say it's definitely difficult for us. Um, I can't really speak much on my um, family. I haven't spoken to them in a while. Um, been on a hiatus with um, everyone, but I definitely have to say it's definitely been devastating for me today and my mother um, because she just feels like, you know, there was no justice served here. Regardless of her little two years that she spent in jail, I've, I've seen the government lock up people for so much smaller, much smaller. And for her to be acquitted of all charges, it, it really, really bothers me to know that there was no real justice served here for us. And I'm not talking for me. I'm not going to just speak for the survivors who are those who are still living and able to walk, talk and breathe and talk about some of these things, even though that their life may not be the same. But for those who are who can't speak, who can't walk, who can't talk. And that's that's what we're here for. That's what the survivors are here for. People who are of, of any su survivor of any mass shooting. This is what we're here for tonight to understand that there we, we have to speak for those who can't. And that is why I'm here. I'm speaking for those who can't. And I'm speaking for my cousin as well. What did you think there when you heard the defense attorney for Nora Salman um, say that she's the real victim here? She, she has maintained her. Her, her innocence since the beginning, she says she did not know anything that her husband planned to carry out. You know, <laughs> I have to kind of laugh at that because there's no way she didn't know. You, you married that man. The, the, the vows is till death do us part. You know every little thing that man does. You knew everything that he was doing. His first destination was Disney World. There was footage of you there with him the day he was going to do it. You knew. So he also, then he picks his other destination, which happens to be the Pulse nightclub. And you chose, he chose to shoot that place up and she knew, she knew about it. And I'm pretty sure, you know, that's not a one man army. I'm pretty sure she was in on it as well as other people. Well, the defense described her as a simple woman uh, with a low IQ uh, that was abused by her husband. They claimed he was cheating on her and kept many mm -hmm. things from her. Uh, prosecutors, they say, were not able to follow through on their promises uh, uh, to prove that she uh, knew about the weapons that he was obtaining um, and that she even helped him scout out targets. I'm, I'm, you know, we're so far past this. She's a victim. Uh, we're so far past that because if that was the case, if you were truly a victim, you would have been left that scenario a long time ago. And I get it because I've, I've witnessed um, domestic violence firsthand. And I have to say, you if you wanted to get out of there, she would have got out of there. 
she would have did what she had to do to get out there for her child, not just for herself, but for her child. And what kind of message does this send to the world? This sends the, to the world that it's okay to do things like this. And that's not what this is. That's not what we're here for. That's, that's not what this is for. Tiara, you're, you lost your cousin that night. You were, you were just 20 years old and your cousin mm -hmm. was, was 18 and she died that night. Mm -hmm. What has life been mm -hmm. like for, for you since then? I, I know that you've said it. It's just, it's changed everything for you. Oh, I'm sorry. So my life has not been the same since. Not saying thing when things like this is supposed to go back to being normal. Your life will never be normal after something like this occurs. Your, nobody's life will. Even for the people who weren't harmed or who weren't a victim there, who wasn't there, people who know about it, it affected them as well. Your life will never be normal. But my life after my cousin was killed that night was not normal. It wasn't normal. I, I, it, everything just spiraled down. Nothing positive came from that. Nothing. Outside of the fact that I'm still living and breathing and I, now I'm putting up a fight. Other than that, when it comes to my family and our people who had something to do with me, I'm not going to cry. Not today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I but we it, can't it just hasn't. What you went through that night, it, it was, mm -hmm. you know, something that most of us cannot even imagine. Um, what do you think needs to happen now? I do feel like that there should be a fight. I do. I would love for the prosecutors to keep pushing, to keep fighting, because this is sending the wrong messages to the world. Look at Parkland. There's a, a possibility that that boy might get off because of his mental issues. So, and I, I feel like that he's still, there's still a punishment there. He killed 17 people for Omar Mateen, his wife, she knew 49 died that night. There's, there's a, there's a message that this is sending like, oh, okay. Hey, it's okay. As long as I knew about it, I just didn't do it. That's it's sending the wrong messages. That this is not what we're going to do. I feel like that we could push a lot harder mm -hmm. and a lot more to make sure that there, there is justice for Orlando. I actually put that hashtag on Facebook justice for Orlando. I went live on Facebook and had a breakdown. I didn't mean to, I just wanted to go and talk about it, but mm -hmm. it didn't quite work out that way. It didn't. I end up breaking down and I, I was losing myself because I was so angry. There needs to be justice. I know that you are part of uh, support groups. Um, victims continue to get together and, and discuss what happened that night and how to, how to change things. I know that's a big part of your conversation and I saw that that Facebook Live and I, I know you're very passionate about, about making sure something like this doesn't happen again. Tiara, thank you for coming on and sharing thank your you. reaction to this with us, and uh, we will continue to follow your story. Thank you.